This is uh, an event put on by the Chicago, um, the Chicago chapter of the Service Design Network around the complexities of service design and health. All right. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump in because we would, we would love to, to talk to you guys a little bit. Um, and I think, you know, what's really great is Aniela has this fantastic, you know, firsthand experience as service design in a hospital. Um, where I'm coming from is, is I would say a complement to that. So Philips is a health technology provider. It's a global country. Uh, it's a global company. So it's actually about 75,000 employees. We're in 17 markets, um, North America, China, APEC, LATAM. Um, and then I'm part of our functional design organization. And um, at Philips, our design group is about 600 people. Um, we have a community of practice around about 90 service designers. Um, and we have somewhere around 25 to 30, depending on how you count them, um, officially titled service designers. So one of the one of the great things that that I get to kind of add today is not just what my work has looked like, but what service design has really looked like for us at Philips being on sort of this other side. So many of the technologies that Aniela mentioned that they're using remote patient monitoring, telehealth, those are actually all things that we supply and um, offer to a variety of our customers. So where I'm going to be coming from is to kind of complement what Aniela shared about that very sort of personal experience and take it a little bit from um, a different angle. Um, so where I, where I wanted to start then and, and kind of uh, dive into is, you know, our whole topic tonight was uh, healthcare services are complex. Um, and so most of you are here because that topic spiked your interest and you said, mm, yeah, I'd like to do a little bit about that. Um, so, you know, I feel pretty comfortable starting off with that statement. Um, but I'm somebody who works in an organization where everything is relative, right? So scale is very relative. So I always like to put things in context. And so if I say health services are complex, relative to what? Um, and so I compare it to financial, a little bit more complex than financial, but not quite as complex as government. Um, and I have former colleagues that are in both of those spaces. And when we stop, swap stories pretty consistently, that's where we land. Um, but, you know, I think, I think the thing for us that we look at, particularly as service design at Philips, um, and then when we think about the fact that we're a supplier to healthcare, you know, the, the question is, well, well, why are healthcare services complex? Um, and I think the simple, maybe not the easy, but the simple answer is that's because healthcare services are systems. And so, you know, as we are thinking about design then, and as we're approaching service design at Philips, we're really thinking about like, how are we actually designing in a system? Um, but great, you're like, sure, okay, D, it's a system. Still don't know what that means or, or what that's, that's saying. And not entirely sure how that relates to healthcare service design systems, right? So, so the first part then, when I say healthcare services are complex because they're systems, I do think it's worth saying, well, okay, so a system is, and how do we define that? Um, and so a system is really defined as an interconnected set of elements that are coherently organized in a way to achieve a specific function or purpose. Um, and so the key things here are interconnected elements, function or purpose. And when you look at this together, a system will always exhibit a certain kind of behavior. So there's a system behavior to it. Um, and so, you know, relative to healthcare, then you could think about like the digestive system, right? It has elements that work together to achieve a purpose. Um, football teams could be thought about as systems. Schools could be thought about as systems. Um, and I come from kind of the old school world of industrial design and Ray and Charles Eames with the power of 10. And so if you think about a tree as a system that is part of a forest, that's a system that sits on the earth as a system, um, you know, we really start to see then how systems work together. So, you know, by this definition, then how does that actually reflect healthcare? And, and again, what makes that complex? So if I break the system down by pieces or by parts, you know, the first one being elements, 
um, healthcare actors are what represent the elements in the healthcare system. And, and this is where it immediately starts getting challenging because we say patients are one of our actors in healthcare. Well, are we talking about patients? What about the families, friends, and communities around those patients? Um, and then within healthcare, you know, we say, oh, well, there's the provider. Well, are we talking about the organization? Are we talking about clinicians, caregivers? Um, and then within healthcare as an actor, we have pairs. Um, but there's also this like funny thing that happens where pairs also become providers. They not only you know, pay for the care, but then they also provide it. And then there's my camp of actors as suppliers to this entire, um, to this entire system. But suppliers can be anything from goods to services, right? So it's also already here, we're just adding layers of complexity. Um, but then if we talk about, okay, so healthcare as a system, uh, the next piece is really then the interconnections. And what we see in healthcare is that we're taking those actors and the interconnections are them working together to deliver healthcare. Um, and in some ways, this seems pretty straightforward until you start thinking about, well, is it a patient connecting with a family member? And what if the family member is actually the caregiver? How does that deliver health care? And then what are the interconnections if uh, there's an acute event for that patient? Um, so again, you know, as we start to think about healthcare as a system and looking at those interconnections, it starts to get very complicated very fast. Um, and then similarly, in sort of the, the last piece then that, that we can see why healthcare is a system is it's all organized around achieving, you know, what we typically talk about as healthcare outcomes. You know, that's really the goal. Um, but the thing is, you know, are we saying it's organized around healthy living? Is it organized and driving towards prevention, you know, uh, fewer actual incidents? Or are we in that diagnosis and treatment space and we want to have more accurate diagnosis, more accurate treatments? And then when we're talking about going home or, you know, sort of that post-acute care recovery, you know, what are we talking about there? And, and so again, you know, you have your whole set of actors, you have your whole set of interconnections just in each one of these spaces. And, and so this is sort of where we get that, you know, healthcare is a very complex thing because as designers, you know, sort of which piece do we design for and what does that look like? Um, and, and I always like to, to sort of make these things very tangible, where we're service designers, you know, make the intangible tangible. And so just as an example, uh, this is a systems map for a very, very small part of healthcare that uh, Philips plays in, and that's emergency care and resuscitation. And so everything that you're seeing here, these are all of the actors, these are all of the interconnections, and depending on sort of where they are in the pie shape, there's a different purpose. And, and one very tiny area of healthcare, right? So when we say healthcare is complex, this is what we mean. It's because it's a system with a lot of actors, very different kinds of interconnections, and depending on where you look, it has a different purpose. So, you know, going back then to sort of service design, looking at healthcare as a complex system, um, you know, we, we get that idea of like, healthcare doesn't work, how can we make it better? Um, and so if you take healthcare as a system, what you're able to start to say is, okay, well, the way that we change system behavior means that we have to do some kind of intervention to one of the parts. Um, and so this makes it seem pretty manageable, right? Um, and, and what I find then is then people say, great, I get it, it's a system, I can totally tackle it, which part do I focus on? And it's a little bit of a trick question because um, in designing healthcare services, in thinking about it as an ecosystem, you can't actually say which piece do I focus on. Um, the whole thing about a system is that all of the parts actually work together. Um, and so then this is where we can start to say, um, well, okay, so as design, how do we think about this all together? And the thing that we're actually seeing, and, and this is where we as Philips and, and sort of that supplier space have really said that to change the system behavior and to really think about that system, we actually have to do this through partnership. We have to think about how we partner across the interconnections so that we can define a shared purpose and move that towards improving care. And 
the, you know, the thing that's, that helps with this is then it's like, you're not alone. So what we're seeing then with our service designers and what that's looking like at Philips um, has come together and I think really three good examples that highlight that. Um, so the first example, and I'll dive a little bit into this, is where we are looking at partnership um, for community-based care. And so here our partnerships are really being between a payer provider um, and multiple suppliers, Philips being one of those suppliers, to offer service propositions then to providers and patients in these non-traditional care settings for the better general outcomes. So like Aniela mentioned, what does it mean in a school? What does it mean in a church? Um, and we've really said that, okay, we, we can't tackle that alone as a supplier, but if we partner with the payers, if we partner with the providers, if we partner with other suppliers, we can really start to make that non-traditional care setting become something. Um, and so then the second example I think that is, is really good, and I'll dive into a little bit more, is where we're partnering around a specific disease state. So in this case, sleep apnea. And here our partnership is between a supplier um, and us as a supplier to offer service propositions to both consumers and patients for better sleep apnea management. Um, and again, it's, you know, in thinking about the consumers and the patients, we recognize that we can't really manage it on its own, that there's this whole end-to-end -end journey and that we need to work with others to do that. And then sort of the last one as we, I, I think is really good and, and kind of takes that different perspective and moves it more towards the preventative care is the fact that um, we've partnered around employee oral health care. And here it's a partnership between a payer and a supplier to really offer a service proposition to employers and employees for better prevention in, in oral health care. Um, so, you know, I started with the idea of health healthcare is complex because it's a system. As service designers, we have to think about the system. What that means is that we have to be able to partner. We have these three examples. And so these three examples in particular I picked because um, with all three of these examples, we've had a service designer who has really led the work across these different partnerships and even our own internal businesses. And because they've been able to really bring that service design perspective, um, they've, they've really driven this work forward and we're seeing that change in beat system behavior that we're looking for. But what sort of do I mean about, you know, war being service design led? Well, when we think about partnerships and the way that we think about the service design at Philips is it's about this idea of the planning of interactions and the designing the intended experience across multiple touch points and over time. And so as we think about a partnership, we're immediately into interactions. We're immediately into multiple touch points because Philips doesn't entirely own it. And we are thinking about that over time because where does one partner come in versus the other? And the other thing with our service designers then is that ability to connect what happens the front stage, the experience that the customer sees, or user, patient, clinician, pick your, pick your flavor. And we have to be able to connect that to the backstage. So again, you know, we're doing this in services every day, but particularly for partnerships, it's thinking about, okay, so not only am I doing across multiple touch points, but how do I connect into my partner's backstage? What does that look like? Who owns what? And so where our service designers have really been able to lead the way in these um, partnership propositions and being able to affect that change in behavior, um, it's bringing these, these three concepts together, multiple touch points, over time, front stage, backstage. Specifically then, I wanna break down how this has really looked per element, you know, because as I said, the, the idea of changing a system's behavior means that you have to focus on um, all of the parts. So what does that really look like then? So for our service designers, really focusing then on the system elements, you know, the elements of a partnership, our service designers have really been in the role of helping the partners, ourselves, the partners that we're working with, um, to really understand what are their roles and responsibilities as elements of this partnership, of this healthcare ecosystem. And so as we think about, you know, what a consumer, patient, user journey looks like, who is going to be responsible for what? And because our service designers can bring that 
um, you know, sort of front stage, backstage piece of it, and they can help tell the story around what this journey is going to look like, they're able to really bring um, that who does what perspective to life. Um, so in the case of our virtual care station, doing that community-based care and our partnership there, it has been, well, when does the payer need to step in? You know, is that part of awareness? Or when does the provider really show up? And ourselves as a supplier, are we responsible for the scheduling? Are we going to be responsible for the next steps? And then we've really been able to negotiate around this patient journey, what that means for each of those involved in the partnership. Uh, the second piece then going, or you know, the second part of the system, if you will, is coming back to the interconnections. And so as we think about our partnerships and the service design role in helping to um, think about those interconnections, our service designers have been critical in being able to, again, kind of get that end-to-end -end complete picture, but particularly focus on the transitions between the different partners. So at the end of the day, you know, a, a consumer, patient, clinician, user, they're going to see that, that front stage experience, if you will. And what we as service designers are really driving around is what do those transitions look like? How do we specify the requirements for this? Um, and so particularly in our telehealth um, sleep apnea space, what we were really doing here is regardless of sort of who owned, let's say, the step, we were able to say, okay, well, this is the place where the transition happens and we need to be able to support that transition and here's what that transition should look like. So as service designers, being able to see those transitions, being able to see that end-to-end, -end, show it, right, and think about what is the experience across it, we've really been then able to work with our partners to say, here's what we need to do in that space. And so the last piece then of, of what service design has really meant and how we've really helped things in the um, partnership, in the healthcare ecosystem space, you know, the partnerships themselves are intended towards a certain purpose, right? So the thing then that leaves is what is the actual system behavior that we're trying to change? And one of the things that's been really fabulous about what our service designers are bringing is they're saying, well, that system behavior, there's others besides us that affect that. Um, and so how do we actually think about enabling our partners to deliver um, and behave in the way that we, we need them to? And so what our service designers have really been doing then in this space is to actually develop the materials that enable the desired behavior by our other partners. Um, so, for example, in the case of our oral health care program, um, where we are, you know, offering with a payer um, something to an employee, the question has really been, well, we need the employer to behave in a certain way if we're going to achieve these goals. So what do we need to develop for them? And, you know, sometimes it's been as simple as what is the flyer that the employer needs to be able to send out. But sometimes it's been even more complex of how to help the employer make sure that their employees are signing up. So all of this, you know, trying to what I wanted to share tonight and really be able to bring back, you know, as perspective or, you know, as the complement to what Aniela was saying and, and was sharing is that as, you know, service designers in healthcare, um, we know that healthcare is a complex service system, right? And so if we start from that standpoint, that gives us this incredible framing that we know in order to really change the behavior of that system, to have healthcare be what we want to do, um, is we have to look at those partnerships because as a complex system, that means that we have to work together and that becomes our leverage point for really change. Um, and then, you know, I think the last thing that really just wanted to bring home is because of that service design mindset, we're able to really activate that partnership intervention and make sure that we're considering the elements, interconnections, and what is the change that we're, the behavior that we're trying to activate. And with that, uh, thank you very much. I know that we, we are at time here, so I appreciate everybody uh, hanging with us and, and letting us uh, chat along.